unpleasant good day, everybody. This is going to be the next video on the Boston Red Sox season or MLB series of off-season videos as they, in their off-season, continue to have a good, successful off-season after giving a chance on Michael Walker to probably, I hope, redeem himself as a relief pitcher, being able to get his stuff fancy to the relief role and kind of get going out there just like a guy like Kendall Graveman was able to do rather than the starting role, but we're waiting to see. But now they signed James Paxton, the guy, the Canadian maple kid, who's able to really hurl it up there. Great breaking ball, very solid fastball, very good pitcher when healthy. And they're able to bring him in as well as Tim LaCastro, who's a guy that would have been nice to keep. Elected free agency, didn't do well last year, only 180. But in the two seasons prior, hit 250, and then in the shortened season, hit 290. A very good speed throw on the bases, can get you some steal. And then also fields a versatile player all around. Obviously a guy that I think a lot of teams will definitely be looking to to pick up to have at the end of their bench or as a utility guy to be able to play a bunch of different roles depending on how stacked that individual roster is. But when it comes to the big maple, James Paxton, this was a brilliantly smart move by the Boston Red Sox. I understand if you look at his latest two years with the Yankees, he only pitched in five games, six seven five or six six four in twenty twenty, six seven five last year. Not overly impressive, but he only pitched in six total games in the last two years. When healthy, this dude is a beast, and he's definitely a very potent third starter and a absolutely great fourth starter. Because his career ERA is a three point five nine, fifty seven and thirty three. So over twelve game or over twenty games, excuse me, over five hundred. 12.8 career war, so a war over 10, which is great, obviously, a very nice career war there, in my opinion. And then this guy has his worst season, other than the last two seasons when he has been healthy, has been a 3.90 ERA in 13 games with the Mariners. He's always consistently been around five or six losses. His most losses have been seven when he was six and seven, and still a very good year, 3.79 ERA, where he pitched well for the M's in 2016, with his best season being a 2.98 ERA, 12 and five, when he pitched like an ace for the Seattle Mariners. So this guy, when he's at his best, really pitching and really staying on the field for a consistent basis, he can even pitch like a 2-1, but he's definitely going to pitch for you like a very good three. And if he's a four in your rotation, like a amazing four, but obviously in the Red Sox rotation, he ain't going to be that deep. So this guy is going to pitch if you slot him in at three, depending where we decide to, to sp split the rotation down this year. He's going to be a very good steady Eddie three for you. As long as he can pitch in those 28 to 29 games range, that's what you would like to expect to get out of James Paxton. It would be great to see him get over the 30 games range, but he hasn't done that in his career. So as long as he can stay healthy coming back, off of being injury plagued the last two seasons, really big time. He's pitched a lot of times in his career. One, two, three, four. Yeah, four times over 20 games. So if he's able to get over that 25 game, hopefully the 28 29 game threshold, like he pitched the two years prior in 18 19 before being out a lot in 2020 20, 21, then that is a huge pickup for the Boston Red Sox. Being able to get the big maple in house and being able to bring in a guy that at the very least is a great three and could be a very good one. And then when it comes to his baseball savant page, just to look at his splits, he's a guy with a 92 mile per hour fastball, 80 mile per hour curve, 85 cutter, and 82 changeup. And he misses his three pitches um, pretty well. He has um, a changeup that he doesn't use all that often. He only threw it 13 times. His cutter, he threw 15 times. Um, he's, or that's his percentage, 15% is change up 13%, excuse me. And his curveball is 16% with his uh, fastball being at the 57 percentile. But um, it says, huh, that's weird because it has it at that up here for his 2020 pitch distribution. But then in his career, oh, there we go. It's in his career. That's what it is. In his career, I think this is what this is. He has a 66.7 for the fastball, 29.2 for the cutter, for stack cast pitch arsenal, and a 4.2 for the curveball. So obviously he doesn't really use that changeup all too much, but he's a guy that has a great cutter, a very good um, fastball, and a nice mixing curveball when he mixes it in. He's the big maple. He's intimidating coming in there. 
Um, sorry for getting confused on the stack cash stuff for the um, baseball savant there. I just recently started using that site more, so it's sometimes I get confused reading their stats there. But this is a great move for the Red Sox, a very wise move. And as always, please, if you enjoy the content, subscribe down below and the subscribe button on the easy use widget up above. A pleasant special thanks to the 168 that have already. And also enter Steel Flyers over on um, Manscaped, and you get 20% off. And also free shipping. Who doesn't love that? Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. And let's go Red Sox. Let's make some more moves before the deadline kicks in tonight at midnight due to the fact that unless there's a miracle, we will be in a lockout. Peace out, everybody.